Hey guys, before I jump into a little on this badass small block Ford 289 cubic inch entertainer, let's start a little with the man behind it all, Douglas Edwin Nash. Known well to us gearheads as Doug Nash, born in Detroit and naturally developing a passion and a love for cars. In 1963, Doug Nash was already behind the wheel of a Ford dealership back 289 cubic inch Fairlane running in G-Stock class. And that was more so as a test mule for the Ford's performance parts menu that was run and looked after by who other than Ernie McEwen. Fairlane wasn't expected to win apparently just to test the go fast parts and tricks they had. But the combination of driver Doug Nash and all the newly developed um, uh, parts, etc., actually made this Fairlane a track winner, soon to become unbeatable, even when moved up to sea gas class. Nash's skills had got the attention of the Ford Powerman and was offered a Mercury Comet in 1964 to race, modified and converted over to compete in BFX class and named the Cyclone. Again, kicking ass, and taking home a number of wins, that super reliable and powerful little baby 289 cubic inch Ford. Further establishing Nash's name. Okay, now, as the FX class began growing popularity, pretty much the class before what would be famously known as Funny Car, Doug Nash jumped into, the, uh, into to build an enter that would be not just unusual, but one of the most well-remembered drag cars of the day, the Bronco Buster. Again, a little associated with Ford's wallet, it's been said. Originally, Ford had offered Nash to use the new 427 camera, single overhead cam, but Nash had just felt more comfortable and confident using his high screaming 289 cubic inch instead. Uh... Uh, Buster was built from an unusual aluminium chassis, super lightweight, short wheelbase, fiberglass body. Was known to be a handful apparently going down the track at super fast speeds and quick ETs. Only advertised to have uh, weighed 1,700 pounds, but apparently had weighed more like 1,200 to 1,400 pounds to help that little 289 do its thing. Amazing only being a stock block 289, obviously, at that time. With the usual performance parts on it of the time being also O-ringed and utilising a cast aluminium girdle, it had propelled the Bronco Buster to, you know, uh, nines, starting things off at mid nines at 150 plus mile an hour, and then eventually getting into the high sixes, like eight sixes, being injected naturally aspirated, and later apparently being blown injected still the Ford 289 cubic inch, and recorded eight threes at 180 mile and, uh, miles per hour. It had potential to have run quicker, hence the mile per hour, but as mentioned earlier, it was a wild and crazy ride always that had prevented that, guys, is one badass small block Ford 289, I can tell you that. After being on top, after being, a, sorry, a top uh, contender in match races, also uh, pulling in crowds as a wheel-standing entertainer, it was short-lived as NHRA soon thereafter outlawed aluminium chassis drag cars and also Jeep slash pickup style bodies. Doug Nash pretty much um, hung up his racing gear after that and pursued his other passions and goals, which would be DNEE, Doug Nash Equipment and Engineering, doing a lot of prototype stuff and engine work for the Detroit players. Then soon followed by his badass built and famously known Doug Nash four-speed and five-speed race, uh, racing transmissions, known for their straight cut spur gears and strength, actually became so respected and famous that it got GM's attention. And they had got and used his Nash 4 plus 3 transmission that they used on their own C4 Corvettes from 1984 to 1988. Nevertheless, the late Doug Nash, another badass racer, innovator of the day, contributing a lot to the automotive and race world, with them famous race smashing and changing gearbox he had developed, not forgetting them early Ford 
Small block for 289 cubic inch days he kicked ass with. That would have been pushing a good 650 horsepower at trap speeds of 180 mile per hour in the buster. That, guys, is badass.